um, engage your um, control your uh, sexual propensity and engage for the ser your as husband and wife in the service of Krishna so your life becomes purified okay go that way or just say oh yeah right performing qualities no difference forget it you can go that way but to, to, let's not be in bewilderment about what it is. Yes. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. It seems very difficult to change the desire of enjoyment into the Krishna service. Uh, wh how, what step one should take to change this lust into love and how we can use lust in Krishna service? Hmm. The very good question. The whole process of devotional service is meant for that. The disease of the conditioned soul is this lusty desire. And the treatment is devotional service itself, the best treatment. And in Kali Yuga especially, the essence of that treatment is the chanting of the holy name of Krishna. We don't need a separate program. We already have the best program to hear the holy name of Krishna, chant the holy name of Krishna, hear about the activities of Krishna. We're attracted now by the activities of some cinema stars or some fictional characters. And so our mind is getting you know, further agitated. So we like to hear about dramas and, and uh, romance and politics. And, all right, then read Krishna book read about the activities of Krishna and that propensity will be fully satisfied and your mind becomes purified instead of contaminated. Everything, whatever you like to do, do that for Krishna. Hmm? Uh, suppose someone, uh, he just loves to make money. There are some people, they just love to make money. You know, they were created like that where you and I see a building or a machine or a set of clothes, they see money. And in material consciousness, we're thinking, I could have that money. You know, I could buy that factory or I could design a better set of clothes or I could make a machine to do this or I could, some way or other, buy cheap and sell at a high price and I could make money. And then he makes the money and he's, okay, now I have money. And money becomes a source of more trouble. But if the same person thinks, I could make money and that money I could use for Krishna, then the more he makes, the better it is. As long as his consciousness is, this is for Krishna. same consciousness, let me make money. But someone's thinking, let me make money for myself and my family. And someone's thinking, let me get some money for Krishna. Hmm? And he's not satisfied, I only have this much. The same thing, I want more. But what does he want more? Why does he want more? He wants to give Krishna more. Prabhupada gave the example that a lusty man sees a flower and he thinks, well, I could pick this flower and give it to my girlfriend. My girlfriend will be. <laughs> and a devotee thinks, I could pick this flower and offer it to the deity. The deity worship is also purifying for the conditioned souls. We want to see some, naturally we want to see beauty. So when we see the form of Radha and Krishna, they're the most beautiful. And we're imagining some love on the basis of this body, poor, uh, miserable body. But Radha and Krishna have the actual love. And we can participate in pleasing Radha and Krishna. Just like now, it's, we're trying to distribute lots and lots of books because that's pleasing to Krishna. 
And we're not satisfied with distributing this many books. Last year we'll distribute the same number. This year we want to distribute more. That means our desire has increased. But the more that desire increases, the more we become happy. And the more the other desire increases, the more we become frustrated. So which way should we go? And the more I'm engaged in that desire, pleasing Krishna, the more I forget about the other desires. The Sanat Kumar explained this to Prithu Maharaj. He said the Yadpada Pankaja Palasha Vilasha Bhakti. He said the those who are trying to stop desires are having a really hard time. It means especially the impersonalist philosophers. They go to some holy place and they sit down in meditation and they try to free their mind from material desires. But material desires are very persistent. And so those desires, because they're trying to think of something which has no form and no qualities. And Maya says, well, I don't know if you want to think of it as form or qualities, but it sure is good. Maya offers, we think about this, think about that, think about this, think about that. Sobhari Muni was a very accomplished yogi, so powerful that he was able to meditate under the water and for thousands of years. But there's no safe place in the material world. While he was under the water meditating, he saw some fish enjoying sex together and his mind became agitated. Fish are enjoying something. And so he broke his meditation and came out and uh, got involved in material life. So Sanat Kumar says to stop these waves of desire because they don't just come one you know one at a time every now and then it's like waves of desire so that Kumar says to stop these waves of desire is very difficult but if one engages one's mind in thinking of the lotus feet of Krishna and serving the lotus feet of Krishna then he automatically he goes beyond all this Maya because he's engaged in the reality the illusion doesn't attract him anymore Haridas Thakur I, I, I've told this before that I I was at some place I don't remember where it was and there was a little drawing of Haridas Thakur and the prostitute. You know the story how Haridas Thakur was in meditation and deep at night some prostitute was engaged to distract him and he said yes sit down and um, I'll finish my chanting and we can enjoy. So that so the and of course the prostitute is you know trying to be as attractive as possible. Anyway there was a a little drawing of that pastime and Haridas Thakur is a young man at the time and he's sitting in his hut and he's chanting Hare Krishna and the prostitute has come and she's you know dressed in something um, filmy and uh, you know not much to it something attractive and showing her body in this way and that way and uh, trying to be as seductive as possible. And Haridas Thakur has this enormous grin on his face. As if to say, you've got to be out of your mind. <laughs> you expect me to get to go for that? <laughs> Lady, you're crazy. Yadavadi Krishna rasa, like that, <coughs> because he was enjoying Ramante Yogi Noanante Sachananda Chidamin, because he was enjoying 
the bliss of chanting the holy name of Krishna. When the prostitute came and said, you can enjoy my beautiful bag of mucus, bile and air. <laughs> there was no attraction there for him. So Sanat Kumar advises Bhaja Vasudev, therefore just engage in the service of, of Vasudev Krishna. And that result which even the great yogis are having such a hard time with, you'll achieve without so much difficulty. But seriously, it's not, not uh, every now and then I'll chant Hare Krishna. It's, it's, a, it's a serious project. Just as sense gratification is a serious project, if we're serious about sense gratification, we attend so many courses and we, we go through so much trouble for education and then we we search all around the city for a good job and then we do this and we do that. For sense gratification, we, we give our life. So Krishna consciousness is not that just, eh, you know, kind of like, yeah, something offhand, yeah, I'll chant Hare Krishna. It means, seriously, uh, dedicate oneself to the service of Krishna. Then Maya, a Maya may tam to Antite. Maya will not be a problem. Yaha Krishna taha Maya nahi adhikar. Where there's light, there can't be darkness. And where there's Krishna, there can't be Maya. Just to drive out darkness will be a very difficult project. But when the light is there, darkness is automatically out of the picture. Is that okay? Well, see there are these hands that go up, but they don't mean anything because the actual person who gets to ask the question is the person who's holding the microphone. Hare Krishna Maharaj. See? I told Hare, you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Where are you? <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj. Okay. Yes. Maharaj, uh, like you mentioned that uh, soul is all knowledgeable. So, uh, Knowing and uh, soul was quite satisfied in this spiritual world. So knowing very well that uh, having the propensity to enjoy in this material world, I will suffer. So why did? Because we're tiny. <laughs> if we were powerful like Krishna, then Maya wouldn't be able to do anything. But because we're tiny, we're just on the edge. So we can be attracted to Krishna or attracted to Maya that tiny size is problematic. Could not, it cannot control it. No? Hmm? It cannot control uh, that kind of desire. We can, but we don't want to. It finally comes down to that little independence. It's easy, but we don't want to. But here's a temple, the whole Bombay could come, but they don't want to. And it's not hard. If it's hard, we have another one up in Juhu, we have another one up in Mirror Road. It's not hard at all. But, you know, if it's that hard, then you get on the internet and we have our temples there. But no, they, they don't want to. That's the problem. Probably called it causeless unwillingness to serve Krishna. Sometimes he also called it dog obstinacy. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, I had the question that at times it becomes very easy to speak to curb our desires, but say for example if I am going out I see a rasgulla or I see a jalebi and I am very much inclined towards it so at that time how to curb that desire how to curb that temptation to eat that thing like at, that, at those times it is very easy like I know all this at that time no shloka comes in my mind that uh, I, I should not I, and all those things that does not come in, my, in our mind at that time how should we do what should we do at that, that, point, that point of time if it's overwhelming you just have this desire buy the rasgulla and order it to Krishna
Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, like we know that Krishna, the best thing he offers to a human being is bhakti. Hmm. And when Krishna descends to this material world just to award bhakti to, to his devotees. But we see that there are uh, 84 million species, in that human species is very less. Means there is one species in that 84 million is human. And that number of human beings well, are very less. Excuse me, could you just speak a little bit more slowly? Yes, please. So it's like, like harder for me to There follow. are 84 million species, in that one is a human being. And the number of human, human beings is very less compared to other species. Right. And Sastra also says that everywhere soul is present. So, and when Krishna descends to this material world, the number of means, uh, persons who get bhakti, that is very few in human beings also. So what is the hope for the souls, those who are all around this world? What is the? Hope, hope. Goal? Hope. Hope is there. The, mm, there may not be very many who are attracted to Krishna, but it's not that because some of, of some law of statistics, I can't be one of them. You can also be one of those, Krishna says, Manusyanam Sahasresh, who out of many thousands, one becomes a devotee, you can be one of them. It's not that because there's some statistical law, one out of a thousand and nine hundred and ninety-nine are already taken, or, you know, and there's some other guy ahead of, ahead of me in the line, so there's no hope. Anyone. And Krishna even comes in different species of life. So the living beings in the other species of life can be attracted. If they're fish, they become attracted to Krishna when he's a fish. It's, it's possible. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, soul is Satchitananda, Satchitananda. Chit means knowledge. An individual soul, how much knowledge it has to have? The soul, how much knowledge? A little bit. <laughs> how much? It has to have. Hmm? How, how much knowledge a soul has the supposed to have? He's supposed to have full knowledge, full according to his tiny size. <laughs> but what is that knowledge? First thing he's supposed to know, I'm not this body. He's supposed to know that I'm part of Krishna. He's supposed to know that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and my business is to serve him. And when he knows Krishna, yasmin vigata sarva meva vigata bhavati. When you know Krishna, you know everything. How much knowledge? You're supposed to know everything. How do you know everything? You know Krishna. He's everything. There's nothing outside of Krishna. So if you know Krishna, of course you'll never know Krishna on, to the fullest extent, but Krishna is everything. You know everything if you know Krishna. And if you know everything else, you don't know anything. Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Um, you imply that uh, the, you know, uh, the futility of life isn't satisfying our senses. Mm. Uh, does one, um, if, if one abstains from the use of our senses, uh, does one solve this futility? No. Abstaining from the use of the senses is practically impossible. The active senses can't be stopped even for a moment. How will we say to the senses, no, nothing for you? That's the program that the yogis are failing at. Atyahara, starve the senses. Ahara means eating and atyahara, I'm sorry, pratyahara, the opposite. There's no eating, starve the senses. And not just the, the tongue, but all the senses. That's described, that's the yoga system in the sixth chapter. Drive out all of the impressions of sense enjoyment so that the mind will be peaceful and it can focus within. But even Arjuna said, I can't do that. And if Arjuna couldn't do it, what to speak of us? So stopping the senses is an impossible project. So we, we shouldn't even start. It's, it's not going to work. Baniyamya Bharatarshapa 
at the end of this chapter, Tasmat Twam Indriyan Yado Niyamya Bharatarshapa. Papmanam Prajihi Hyenam Gana Vigyana Nashanam. My dear Arjun, you can uh, conquer this destroyer of knowledge and self realization in the form of lust. How? Uh, niyamya, by regulation. We don't say no eating. We say no meat eating. <laughs> we say eat Krishna prasadam. So the eating isn't stopped, but it's regulated. Don't eat ordinary food cooked by non devotees for the sake of uh, making money or satisfying the senses. Eat the remnants of Krishna prasadam, of Krishna, Krishna's food. We don't say, don't sleep. Don't sleep too much. Uh, we don't say, no sex. We say, no illicit sex. If you can avoid sex entirely, fantastic. <laughs> Otherwise, then all right, get married and have children for Krishna that's also allowed. So it's not, uh, we don't say don't see, the sense that the eyes want to see, close them. But come here and see the beautiful form of Krishna, see the Krishna pastimes. There's something for the eyes, there's something for the ears, there's something for the tongue, there's something for the nose, all the senses, there's something for them in connection with Krishna. From one point of view, you can say that our whole program is sense enjoyment. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, does soul have a false ego? Excuse me? Does soul have false ego or if not... Does the then soul have a false ego? Not by constitution, but by misuse of independence. Uh, we are told that earlier we were in a spiritual world uh, where we were in the form of uh, Satchitananda mm -hmm. and <coughs> there we were not having any matter either subtle or gross so how we became envious to Krishna this false ego means as soon as I think let me enjoy separately that's immediately false ego is there it, from another point of view it, it, it's, not even, it's not even real it's described as the position of a man seeing his head cut off in a dream. You know, you're, you're having a dream, and in the dream you're seeing your head cut off. So if you thought about it, you'd say, well, wait a second. I'm seeing my head, so I must be okay. But instead, he's in terror. Oh my God, my head's being cut off. <laughs> so it has no reality. But by turning away from Krishna, he's in that situation. <laughs> now, <coughs> there are some very clever people who've got themselves a different strategy. how to develop a feeling of urgency to make oneself more receptive. Yes, Radhanath Maharaj was talking about that this morning, how urgently Pariksha Maharaj was uh, feeling the necessity of hearing about Krishna. So if we associate with those who have that feeling, yeah. I, uh, a materialist becomes materialistically inclined in a certain way by association. He associates with, he goes to college and associates with lusty young men. And even if he's not a lusty young man, by the time he's out of there, he, he's another addition of them. 
by association. Uh, so if we associate with devotees who are eager to hear about Krishna, then we'll become eager to hear about Krishna. You said that the chief. You said that lust is desire to enjoy separate from Krishna. The only thing that we can enjoy is energy, which is oh, feminine. Okay, which is which is feminine and eternally <coughs> connected, maybe. Con with the Lord. So is our desire essentially incest? Is this our cause of falling from the spiritual world? Yeah, where prakriti means fem female, and we're thinking of enjoying the material energy, which is also female. So that's not incest. What is that? Homosexuality? <laughs> But the, the purusha is is meant to enjoy prakriti. But we're prakriti. And we're trying to enjoy prakriti. So that doesn't work. The, the only purusha is Krishna. And when we accept that, all right, I'm prakriti, then I'm meant for Krishna's enjoyment. Not that I can set myself up as a separate enjoyer. So as soon as I think, well, I'm also purusha, I'm then finished. Okay, let's see what goes on here. Wow, they're coming in fast and thick here. How to overcome emotional attachment toward opposite sex? Become emotionally attached to Krishna. <laughs> People say, why God Krishna incarnates in India only? Why not other parts of the world? <laughs> My answer is that I, I think it's for the food. <laughs> other parts of the world, they don't know how to cook. <laughs> Where else are you going to get rasgulas, <laughs> samosas? Anyway, well, don't get me started. Uh, from the, another point of view, Krishna comes in different parts of the world. There are incarnations, Shaktivesh avatars, who come in other parts of the world to, to spread Krishna consciousness. So he's, he's represented. But this is home base. Someone, Krishna could appear anywhere could have appeared in Mexico. <laughs> but he chose to appear in India and, and you know someone said well why didn't he appear in in um, Karnataka? Why in Uttar Pradesh? And he likes it, that's all. Malayas <laughs> Yaiva Chandanam uh, Kunti Devi prays that you've appeared in the Yadu dynasty, just to glorify that dynasty, you could have appeared anywhere. But you chose to appear in this place. Just like sandalwood. Uh, Malaysia and such place are famous for sandalwood. 
The sandalwood could grow in a lot of other places, but it happens to grow there. I just, while coming into the airport, there was a sign, 50% of the mangoes in the world come from India. You know, so they could come from anywhere, but they happen to come from India. Hmm? So Krishna could appear anywhere. He happens to appear, to appear in India. So then, you know, well, why do you have to appear anyway? That's what he chose to do. But then he extends himself all over the world through the Krishna consciousness movement. This Bhagavad Gita is also an incarnation of Krishna. It's being distributed all over the world. Deity is appearing all over the world. Krishna is not unrepresented. A Krishna con if Krish Krishna consciousness is natural to us, but after we start practicing, I feel sleepy in japa, lazy to get up. Then the mind gives the option that, well, no need to control the senses. Then it's like frustrated or dangling in Krishna consciousness. What to do? Which part of devotional service should be focused a lot? Yeah, Srila Prabhupada has given us a very balanced program with chanting and hearing and books and uh, worship of the deity and so many engagements in the service of, of Krishna and it's presented in a form where it's already, you know, we don't have to think, well, what should I do more? It's already there. If we follow along with the program, just like in school, you don't have to, s to figure out what, should I go to classes, which class, it's, it's you know, the, the curriculum is all worked out. It's been there for years, you just have to follow it. So the program is already there, but abhyasa yoga yuktena, uh, practice, abhyasena tukontaya vairagyena chagriyate, by practice. Practice makes perfect. And stick with it. Sometimes it will be more difficult, sometimes it will be more easy, sometimes I'll feel sleepy, sometimes I'll feel wide awake, but if I stick with it, because I'm sticking to that principle. Every day I'll chant, every day 16 rounds, every day however many rounds at least, whatever my vow is, I'll do that. Uh, because I've decided to get up every day, all right, I'll get up. That practice makes perfect. One day it will come to the point where we'll just be mad after Krishna. And not all at once, but gradually. If we, uh, we should just have to stick to it. Oh, okay, my goodness. <coughs> this is essentially the same question in a different form, so I'm going to treat it as answered. Can you please briefly explain the Vedic conception of philosophy of language? No. <laughs> uh, philosophy of language is, is a technical subject um, which is studied by scholars of, 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 of the topic and I'm not a uh, not trained in that discipline, philosophy of language. And so I can't answer your question, no. Except by saying, no, I can't. It, it, I can say that it's highly developed. They have language which sort of develops from the material platform. You start out from, well, you start out from muck, from inert chemicals, and then the chemicals get activated and they somehow turn out to be alive. And after millions of years of uh, evolution, language develops, and then language gets more and more sophisticated, and then you get college professors who can <laughs> write books about the philosophy language and all of that. Um, our philosophy is completely different. Language is 
transcendentally present in the spiritual world. The first person is the most intelligent person. He's not some sort of improved upon monkey. Adi Kabiye, he's the most intelligent. He was in, imbued with knowledge by Krishna from within the heart and he offers beautiful Sanskrit prayers. And the language achieves its perfection when it's used in the glorification of Krishna. So we have a whole different take on things. But if you want it in technical terms of philosophy of language, then you have to speak to one of my god brothers who are learned in academic topics. How wrath can be used in the service of Krishna in our practical life? Yes, be angry at the materialists. The, the demons, you know, they're, they're preaching this rubbish. You know, the, eh, life has no purpose, it's whatever you make of it. There's no God. Everything just comes from uh, atoms and blah, 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 blah. Get angry. <laughs> Let him have it. And they're teaching all this rubbish. They're exploiting the resources of the material world like anything. And for their, for their own so-called, uh, for their own self-aggrandizement, they're causing misery all over the world. So we should be angry. They've stolen Krishna's resources and they're trying to exploit for themselves at the cost of everyone. The more you think about it, the more you get angry. But a devotee can be angry. There was one Pandal program here in India and the devotees were on the stage chanting and dancing and playing kartals and mridangas and some creepy guy in the audience started like you know, wanting to grope one of the ladies. The Prabhupada took his cartals and started swinging them. <laughs> you know? You animal. You come here for that? You think these women are prostitutes or something because they came from America? but took his cartels and was ready to smash the guy. So you can be angry for Krishna. On many occasions I saw Prabhupada angry for Krishna. In material nature, one sees the forms like a father, a devotee, etc., and gets attracted, say, attached. So when I do chanting, on what should I meditate? The word Krishna, the sound Krishna, it feels impersonal. What should I do? Yes, the sound Krishna, you don't have to meditate on something separately. Just try to hear its transcendental sound. Just concentrate attention on the sound because the sound is not different from the form, from the qualities, from the pastimes and the Krishna is most easily realized in sound. So chant Hare Krishna, hear Hare Krishna. Uh, if you want something, if you think that well there's no variety in chanting Hare Krishna, uh, then read Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, then there's so much to keep you, keep your mind engaged. But by chanting Hare Krishna on and on you'll reach the point where uh, it's always new. In the beginning our chanting is mechanical. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. <laughs> but by seriously chanting, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya, by regularly chanting, then it becomes more and more. You get attracted to the chanting. Chaito Darpana Marjanam, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said it's a gradual cleansing process. So we should stick with it. And the, or Rupa Goswami gives the example that the jaundiced men 
has been told to eat sugar candy and he's tasting it and going, ah, no taste. But if he goes on eating it, then one day as, as he becomes cured, it will taste very sweet. Initial day, we have more eagerness for service, but as seniority comes, that enthusiasm for chanting and devotional service decreases. So how can one maintain himself during this phase? Again, stick with it. Sometimes in the beginning, there's an initial enthusiasm. But that initial enthusiasm, you know, I'm enthusiastic on Tuesday, and by Friday, I've forgotten all about it. Hmm? So real love means that uh, there's sometimes there's eagerness sometimes there's not but I stick with it and there's commitment just like in the affairs between men and women there's an initial enthusiasm and you know maybe that becomes like a love affair for a week or something but in married life there's commitment you know and maybe some days they're not that enthusiastic about one another but there's commitment. This is my wife, this is my husband, and there's service. Now well, that's where there's actual love. Love is not that thing that they did for a week and then say, wow, that was great, but forget it. Love means there's commitment, yeah? As far as there's love in the material world, there's the commitment is there. So don't be disappointed if, you know, there's not all that, like, great, stick with it practice and keep that attitude that I'm not getting enough I'm not sufficiently eager why am I not that that will be good if we're not eager we should be eager to be eager why should we believe in scriptures what is proof of validity of scriptures the scriptures are considered self-evident <laughs> one reason to believe in scriptures is because the alternatives are so crummy achinchakalu ye bhava nainam tarkena yojiye there's no that to understand that which is inconceivable argument will be useless tarko apratishta simple, simply arguing won't bring us to the conclusion ah <sighs> where it said yeah uh, same thing that just by logical argument we won't understand the supreme uh, but Shabda uh, Yoni by hearing from Vedic knowledge the example is given suppose you want to understand who your father is you don't know who your father is and you want to know so you can take the research course you start matching up all the DNA samples that you could possibly get your hands on or you can start anyway whatever way you want to do it or thinking about it and logic and but the real way is you ask your mother she's the authority on the subject and when your mother tells you sir this is your father that's it in two minutes you get the answer that would have taken you a hundred years to uh, get an inconclusive answer to and that's science they're all uh, they reach one conclusion and 20 years later you come back and they say well we used to think that but now we know this so the Vedas are like the mother and Krishna the God is like the father so if we want to know the father, we should ask the mother. Go someplace else and ask, what is the purpose of life? Let's say, I'm not going to find out from scripture. What's your alternative strategy? someone have a good alternative strategy I don't know why I'm here I don't know what the purpose of my life is I don't know who I am now what's my strategy 
go to school? They don't know the answers to those questions and by the time you're out of there you'll be ten times as confused as you were when you went in. <laughs> think about it. Wonder and think maybe this, maybe that, maybe this. I'm in ignorance. That's why I have the question. So an ignorant person just thinking maybe this, maybe that, what's he going to get? Start discussing it with, you know, mental speculators, people who are very intelligent. You'll find out real quick that everyone, every one of them has a different opinion. And that it doesn't lead anywhere. Someone has a philosophy of language and then someone else has a better philosophy of language. Then someone overturns that and has another... There's no end to it. Experience, try that. But experience is, is a mess. If one be, would become self-realized by experience, everybody would be self-realized. Because everybody's doing so many things. Maybe America, where they're trying anything and everything, would be the center of self-realization. But they're frustrated. They, they've tried that. Maybe this, maybe that. I'm not happy as a man. Maybe I should turn myself into a woman. I'm not happy as a woman. Maybe I'm really a man. And they've tried anything. Anything you could think of, they've, somebody has tried it and, be, and, and, and achieved frustration. And now we're going to come along and say, well, experience is going to work for me. So you give your, your alternative strategy. Or take this. This is quick and, quick and direct. We take knowledge from Krishna, business finished. If you don't like it, you have... Okay. Try, try your luck on your own. Maybe after 20 years of failure, you'll come back and say, uh, can I have a copy of that book? From another point of view, so many great souls have attained perfection by following Krishna's instructions. Ramanuja Acharya, Madhva Acharya, so many great saints and saintly persons. So why should we not follow in the footsteps of those who've been successful? You, know, you, you want to make money and you go to such and such place and say, how did you make money? Well, I read such and such book and that's where I learned how to be successful in the stock market or something. Say, so, can I get a copy of that book? You don't go to the place where the people are living in shacks and huts and have no money and say, what's your secret? <laughs> those who achieve success. Upadek shanti te ganam ganina stattva Krishna says, and it's perfectly sensible, that if you want to get knowledge, go to those who are seers of things as they are. And those persons say, follow Shastra. Eating more prasadam is good or bad? <laughs> it depends how you look at it. Compared to eating more of non-prasadam, it's very good. Someone is going to, if you're going to overeat, overeat prasadam. Hmm? Someone's very gluttonous, he wants to eat and eat. Come here and attend our feast and eat too much. That's good. But then as one wants to make progress, then he starts to think that, you know, moderate is, is okay. That I'm not really going to enjoy by more and more and more. So for the beginner, all right, let him eat more. And then as one becomes, naturally it will come that, all right, uh, I don't want to sleep all day. I want to serve. So let me, yuktahara viharas cha, Krishna says, one can get free from all miseries by being moderate in his eating.
how chanting Hare Krishna is a service because while chanting we are not directly serving Krishna Krishna likes it, that's all <laughs> so someone's chanting Hare Krishna Krishna likes it he considers it service we may think I'm not doing such a big thing but Krishna appreciates it so it's service From another point of view, we're taking the process that will revive our service spirit. So that's also service. It is said that man in the mode of ignorance <coughs> gets a form of lower animal species like hog and also becomes a shudra. How? Yeah, according to his ignorance, those who are deeply ignorant may become hogs and dogs. Those who are within the human margin but ignorant may become uh, dull human beings, according to one's previous activities and desires. Should I keep stick with these questions? What should I do? Give me some direction. <laughs> As for direction, they give me more questions. <laughs> oh, okay. No, it wasn't a question. Please conclude the Q&A session at 10 p.m. That's eight minutes. Okay. Good. I was an illusion. I thought it was another question. Sometimes in dancing kirtans we go wild. Isn't it our sense enjoyment rather than Krishna? <coughs> the Mahaprabhu's kirtan, they also went a little wild. The whole Krishna consciousness movement is wild. <laughs> We have envy. This also comes from Krishna. Is there any instance of Krishna exhibiting envy? That's mentioned in Nectar of Devotion. There's some examples like that. <coughs> in the <coughs> good air conditioning. In the Nectar of Devotion, it's mentioned that some of the cowherd boys were saying, if we've def been defeated by like, this cowherd boy and ca that cowherd boy, then who could be weaker than us? That's like a kind of envy, but it's transcendental envy. <coughs> no other example readily comes to mind. I'm sure there are others. How to stop the urge to show off, to be the center of attraction, being the best even among other devotees. Just make Krishna the center of attraction. Let Krishna be the best. Uh, what kind of best are we? But that's our problem. We want to be the best. So uh, let Krishna be the best. When, when Prabhupada was given credit for doing something, Prabhupada would say that it's just the credit goes to my Guru Maharaj or the credit goes to Krishna and that's a fact <laughs> we know that spiritual life is blissful and we even feel it but when mind is agitated we forget the blissful nature of spiritual life and mind says, there's no bliss in spiritual life, just surrender uh, unto me, I will give you pleasure. How to deal with this practically? Tell the mind to go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Sh 
Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarashati Thakur said that in the morning one should beat the mind a hundred times with a broomstick and a hundred times in the evening with a shoe. <laughs> really, just the mind should not be given credence. We shouldn't put faith in the you know, mind who says... <coughs> You've been telling me rubbish since time immemorial. Why should I listen to you? That's all. <coughs> At the end of the chapter, Krishna says, Evam bhute param budva samstayatmanam atmana jahi shatrum mahabaho kama rupa durasada. My dear Arjun, by higher than the intelligence, indriyani pranyahu indriyabhya param manaha <coughs> manasas tu prabhutir yo bhute paratastusa higher than the senses is the mind higher than the mind is the intelligence and higher than the intelligence is the soul therefore Krishna says you should control the, in the mind by the intelligence why should it go the other way around if I'm intelligent why should I come under the control of the mind which is below the intelligence especially when the mind is taking dictation from the senses which is still lower so uh, we believe in top-down management management should not be from the bottom it should be from the top the intelligence should manage the mind the mind should manage the senses and in this way one should conquer this enemy in the form of lust and engage the mind the senses the intelligence everything in the service of Krishna and 10 o'clock has arrived. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. <laughs> 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 Let us thank His Holiness Jaydwet Swami Maharaj for his wonderful session by loudly chanting three times. <laughs> this is announcement for Pune Voice devotees. Tempos are waiting outside the glaze. to the accommodation places as soon as possible.